My name is Steve Clow. I work for Hampshire County Council and I lead their property services and have done so for some time now. Uh, this is a project which we call Dame Mary Fagan House. Uh, its aims are to produce a working environment that will be pleasurable for staff to be in, but also to be a much more efficient way um, of delivering services. So it's lower cost, but it's a great place to work. And for us, it's about getting the balance between those two. This project went really, really smoothly, I'm pleased to say. Um, uh, we appointed a contractor early um, to get their involvement, so it's really important that it was a collaborative project. So we had some months working directly with the contractor to plan and manage this project. Because what was important to my council is we deliver this project on time and on budget. And quite frankly, I wouldn't be standing here uh, today if we hadn't done so. It's really important to work with a contractor because um, they add significant value right through the pro project from beginning to end. Um, the designers and the clients only know so much about how to build a building. Um, and we need to involve the contractor and they work with us for some time to be able to engage with their supply chain, think through some of the challenges associated with how are you going to build this, how are you going to get access, what are the constraints, maybe even things like you know, what, what materials and what components are on long delivery. Um, so that again, when you start this project on site, you start confidently and purposefully and you see a great product. Uh, come alive. It's really important that um, as a council uh, we have value for money. So we've got to understand that we want to be able to select a contractor. We don't want to select a contractor from a huge number. We want a limited number and that's where a framework arrangement is really positive for us. So we will have worked generally with the majority of contractors on that framework at some point during its four-year lifetime. But what's significant for us um, is that there's still competition before we um, appoint them to do a specific job like this. So they will have tendered originally, um, giving us uh, competitive rates for their overheads and the like. But when they come to do a project like this, we put some specific plans, uh, an indication of the timescale, and we would ask contractors to bid through a mini competition process um, to, for this specific project. And then we select a contractor who is really up for delivering the project that we see today. Early contractor involvement is essential to achieving a project on budget, um, a project on time, um, and more importantly, kind of an understanding and engagement about some of the challenges associated with a project like this. What we've done here um, is the County Council actually bought a building. Um, uh, we knew we needed a building in this location, so we managed to get a very good uh, deal on buying a building which was two-thirds empty, hadn't been occupied since it was built. And then we worked with the contractor, so we had access to the building. We knew what the scale and scope of what we wanted to do. So the contractor's involvement, particularly around cost, um, was, was imperative. Um, because I don't want to go back to my council and ask for more money on any project. That's not a very positive thing to do. So on this project and virtually every other framework project we've done, you ask for an amount of money at the beginning and then you want to let the members of the council know that you've delivered it for that at the end. And this was one of those successful projects. There was a considerable amount of added value which came out of the design phase uh, with the contractor. Um, purchase of furniture, uh, requirements for uh, delivery of, you can see around me, hopefully it's, um, it's a bright, colourful environment. So um, the designers get to meet the contractor early. Sometimes we push the boundaries with contractors and say, look, we want to do something like this because um, we don't want every office to feel and look the same. And that is a bit of a challenge when it comes to flexible working because nobody uh, sitting around me um, owns their own desk. They can sit anywhere, they can work 
anywhere they have access to IT and that's how we get economies of scale and efficiencies. So we're explaining to the contractor what we want to achieve as both designers and client and they always buy into it when you're doing a project like this because in the end they'll move on and do another project but they want to enjoy it too. Uh, and so engagement with the main contractors, site agent and project managers, and sometimes even the cost managers. So you have a common, um, a common goal and they become part of the team that delivers a project like this. So it can be fun. There are a number of challenges associated with this project um, in that uh, we had a time scale we had to deliver to. We had other buildings which the staff were in, with leases coming to an end. So once we'd started the journey to deliver this project, we needed to get to a particular date. So the thing about a framework, like the Southern Construction Framework, is that it gives you confidence that the contractor is going to deliver it um, on time, because their record and other contractors on the framework's record is a very positive one. Of all, it's about the people. It's about the contractors, people, and their commitment to get a good project uh, in the end. The key learning points from this particular project also relate to a whole history of the projects that we've done. We, we capture lots of contractors' performance information, um, which the people that manage the framework um, let us know. Uh, and we always take time at the end of a project to review what went well and what didn't go quite so well so you can feed that into uh, the next project they do. The contractor that worked with us here also, um, both before this and after this, secured a very similar sort of project through a mini competition with us. So therefore we were able to passport that learning um, a lot of the furniture, a lot of the components inside the building are very similar from one project to another. So the designers have specifically selected these so the contractor can get us better deals for the next time we use it um, and so on. So uh, that learning that you get is positively fed into the next project and the next project. I mean, a, fr a framework like the Southern Construction Framework will last for four years. So you get a lot of time to be able to develop ways of doing things more efficiently and at lower cost. The important thing about any framework, and in particular what we're going to see in the Southern Construction Framework, is confidence about the outcome. Um, we know because we've been measuring this for... Hampshire County Council has been, been involved in frameworks for now 12 years. And we have really strong evidence that if you compare it to a traditional tender where you give a contractor four weeks to price and then you ask them to start on site in two weeks' time, um, you're usually heading for some problems that way. Uh, a framework enables you to get the time to get the contractor involved and we know gives you significantly better certainty of delivery on time and on budget and in particular as well to a quality. For my council, um, the economic prosperity in Hampshire is really, really important. So they're keen to understand and know that local labour and the local supply chain are involved. What tends to happen is a bit of a myth uh, in that because the contractors' names are known nationally and regionally that um, they're finding their resource to deliver these projects from, I don't know, Stornoway or Wales or somewhere else other than in Hampshire. But we've done some studies over the last few years and we've demonstrated that over 80% of the labour and the supply chain and subcontractors comes from within 30 miles of the site. So although the main contractor has a big national presence, actually the people they use, the tradesmen they use, will live and work in Hampshire. <laughs>